Hello there, welcome back to another Cavalry tutorial. This is another mini tutorial in my constraints series. In this video, we'll be looking at the bounding box constraint. As with all these, holding down control and period or command and period, you can type in constraints and you can look at all the constraints we'll be doing in this series. And in this video, we'll be looking at the bounding box constraint. Now the bounding box constraint has an input shape as a width, height, offset, and then an out position. And we will be applying bounding box constraints to this composition here to make it responsive. In this fictional app, the only thing you can do is subscribe to my channel. Seems unrelated. And then I've animated it to go from phone to widescreen tablet. We will be using the bounding box constraint to add some responsiveness to this design. The first thing we'll do is look at the subscribe button down here. We want it to stay in the same relative position to the bottom as it is right here. But currently it goes all the way down to the bottom, doesn't look so great. So with our bounding box constraint, we'll call this our button constraint. Now the input shape is gonna be the screen. The screen here is this background shape that I'm using as my aspect ratio. And that's the thing that's being animated. So I will connect the screen into the button constraint input shape. And then we'll connect the out position of our constraint into our middle button position. By default, it goes straight to the middle. So let's undo that and set up a guide. And I'll just set it up to be right at the bottom of the text there. So now when I connect the out position to the middle button position, I know where to reposition it. So let's play around with these sliders a little bit. Width, currently we're at 50% of the width of our box. So I can change this to zero. And based on the anchor point of our layer, it'll take us to zero. I'm gonna leave this at 50%. The height is the thing that I wanna change. So I'll move this to, oh, about there. That looks pretty great. So now, as the screen animates, our button is responsive to that screen. Next thing up is the logo, and we need another bounding box constraint. So we'll call this logo con. And again, we want to make the screen our input shape and then set a guide to the bottom and then connect our out position to the logo's position. Not too much to change here. Set that to about 54. There's not a ton of movement there, but there is movement and it is responsive to the moving rectangle, okay? Pretty simple stuff so far. Next, we're gonna look at the top bar. So the top bar is the only shape that I have invisible currently. So if I make that visible, I have it this nice purple color. In fact, let me even make it this red color here so it can just really stand out. So this is our top bar. And within the top bar, we have our cell phone bars, our time, and our battery. And I want those to stay in the same relative positions on the screen that they are right now. So when we go to tablet mode, the clock is still in the middle, the battery is still on the right, and then the cell bars are on the left. We're going to do a bounding box constraint within a bounding box constraint. So let's set up this bounding box constraint. We'll call this one bar con. We'll set our screen to be our input shape. And then we'll drag the out position of bar con down to top bar and set that to the position. I didn't set a guide layer and that's because I want this layer to align directly with the top. So going into bar con, let's change the height to zero. And the way that I have this bar right now, double click on it, there's an align deformer that sets the anchor point to be at the top. So setting our bounding box constraint to be zero sets this bar right at the top. The next thing I want to do, so let's open up screen and top bar, is however wide the screen is, I want that to be the width of that bar. So I'll click and drag the size width over to the size width of our top bar shape. So now the bar is animating responsively. For organization, I'm going to make a group out of this top bar. And I'll just call this top in all caps. Now within this group, we can add another three bounding box constraints. One, two, three. And it's one bounding box constraint per element that you want to constrain. This one we'll call cell con. This one we'll call clock con. And this one we'll call battery con. Make sure those are in our top group. Now for all of these, we're setting the top bar as our input shape. 
So I'll just connect that to all three of these. Input shape. Input shape. And then we'll make sure all these are open and drag our out position of the battery con into our battery layer. Click on position. It does go straight to the middle, that's okay. And to make this a little quicker, we can just connect the layer itself instead of that single attribute. We can connect that layer to these other layers. So we'll connect the clock con to time position. We'll connect cell con to bars position. Now inside of each of these, we can take the width and just move that over to the side. And then we'll use the offset Y here to make sure it's at the right Y height. Okay, and then the clock is right in the center. That's where we want it. And the battery can be over here at the end. So this one, we have 7% on our width. And so here we can set this to 93. Now the battery is a bit wider though. So we'll drag that back to about 92 and then use our offset once again to correct the Y position. Okay, now with our three bounding box constraints, let's see how it animates together. We can hide this top bar shape and there we have it. And as the extra credit assignment, see if you can figure out how to make the gradient responsive. Okay, thank you so much for tuning in on this bounding box constraint video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see more videos like this one and check out the other tutorials in this series.